forecasting wholesale electricity prices used to be a straightforward though laborious task. It generally concerned medium and long term horizons and involved matching demand estimates to the supply obtained by stacking up the existing generation in order their operating cost. These production cost models had the capability to forecast prices on an hour by hour level, however they ignored strategic bidding practices including the execution of market power. They were appropriate for regulated markets which have little price uncertainty, a stable structure and no gaming, but were not suitable for competitive electricity markets. In an excellent review paper by Ventosa in 2005, he identifies three main electricity market modelling trends, optimization, equilibrium and simulation models. In this classification structure, optimization models focus on the profit maximization problem for one of the firms competing in the market. The equilibrium models, which we'll discuss later on, represent the overall market behaviour, taking into consideration competitive uh, behaviours amongst participants. Finally, simulation models are an alternative to equilibrium models when the problem under consideration is too complex to be addressed with a formal equilibrium framework. In the Nash Corno framework, Electricity is treated as a homogeneous good, and the market equilibrium is determined through the capacity setting decisions of the suppliers. Unfortunately, these models tend to provide prices higher than those observed in reality. Researchers have addressed this problem by introducing the concept of conjectural variations, which aims to represent the fact that rivals react to higher electricity prices by producing more. One of the few applications of the nash corno framework to electricity price forecasting was proposed by Rumdahl and Mazumdar in 2008. In their work, they took a fundamental bid-based stochastic model and proposed using it for the predicting hourly prices and average prices in a given period. They considered two sources of uncertainty, the availability of generation units and demand. Their results show that as the number of firms in the market decreases, the expected values of prices increase by a significant amount. They also demonstrated that an accurate temperature forecast can reduce the prediction error of electricity price forecasts significantly. The supply function equilibrium approach models the price as being the equilibrium of companies bidding with supply curves into the wholesale market. Calculating the supply function equilibrium requires a set of differential equations to be solved, rather than the typical set of algebraic equations that arises during the nash corno framework. Thus, these models have considerable limitations concerning their numerical tractability, and to speed up computations the demand is often aggregated into blocks. However, this in turn leads to the extreme values out of the analysis, which many are not prepared to accept when focusing on price forecasting or risk management. To assist with decreasing the numerical complexity of general SFE models, linear SFE models have been proposed. In such models, the demand is linear, or more precisely affine. At each moment in time, demand is a function of price, has a non-zero intercept and a constant negative slope. The marginal costs are linear or affine, and SFE can be obtained in terms of either linear or affine supply functions. In this approach, all firms receive the marginal clearing price for their supply. Since the supply functions are non-decreasing, and the market clearing price is the same for all players, this market clearing condition maximises the social welfare where there's no transmission congestion. This framework has been used extensively for analysis of bidding strategies, market power and market design, and of course congestion management, but electricity price forecasting applications have been very limited so far. A third, less popular static equilibrium modelling approach has been proposed by Battle as a modification of the traditional production cost models. Based on the conjectural variation, the strategic production cost modelling approach takes agent bidding strategies into account. Each agent tries to maximise their own profits, taking into account its cost structure and the expected behaviours of its competitors. When simulating the supply curve building process under this methodology, we assume that the firm just knows its costs and its conjecture about the derivatives of its residual demand function. As no iterations are made, firms do not have the chance to refine their bids and take into account rivals' reactions. Compared with the nash corno and the SFE models, the main advantage of this approach is its computational speed, which makes it suitable for real-time analysis. The static equilibrium models we've discussed so far are based on a formal definition of equilibrium, expressed in the form of a system of algebraic or differential equations. Even if the set of equations has a solution, it's often very hard to find, and the model has to resort to heuristics to solve the problem. Moreover, such modelling approaches have limitations in the way in which the competition between participants can be represented. On the other hand, agent-based simulation models do not have these limitations, whilst being not much harder to solve. Over the last two decades, agent-based computational economics has become a widely accepted approach to solve both the theoretical and practical problems that we face in energy economics. 
The basic toolkit is a class of computational structures and rules for simulating the actions and interactions of autonomous agents. We're thinking that they're individuals, collective entities, organizations, it doesn't really matter. And then the ultimate goal is being to assess their effects on the system as a whole. One of the first applications was to model the strategic behavior observed in the England and Wales electricity markets, and that was in a paper by Bauer and Bunn in 2000. They conclude that daily bidding, together with uniform pricing, yields the lowest prices, whilst hourly bidding under a pay-as-bid system yields the highest prices. In a similar context, Day and Bunn again in 2001 proposed a simulation model for analysing the potential for market power. This agent-free simulation approach is similar to the SFE scheme, but it provides a more flexible framework that allows for consideration of actual marginal cost data and asymmetric firms. In a review article in 2004, Koritarov argues that the purpose of agent-based modelling is not necessary to predict the outcome of the system, but rather to reveal and explain the complex and aggregate system behaviours that emerge from the interaction of the agents. Currently, agent-based models are typically mere elements of more complex hybrid electricity price forecasting systems, rather than the sources of price forecasts themselves. So what therefore are the strengths and weaknesses of these various models? Well, on the one hand, multi-agent models, and agent-based models in particular, are a class of extremely flexible tools for the analysis of strategic behaviour in electricity markets. On the other hand, this freedom is also a weakness, as it requires the assumptions embedded in the simulation to be justified, both theoretically and of course empirically. A number of components have to be defined, the players, their potential strategies, the ways in which they interact, and the set of payoffs. Obviously, therefore, a substantial amount of modelling risk is also present. While in classical power pools, the sellers are generators and their characteristics are identifiable through their assets directly, in power exchanges, every type of market participant can be a seller. For example, a distribution company that's over-contracted in the bilateral market can be a seller in the power exchange's spot market. Thus, the problem of identifying the relevant market players and their strategies can become highly non-trivial. Moreover, multi-agent models generally focus on qualitative issues rather than quantitative results. They may provide insights as to whether or not prices will be above marginal costs and how this may influence the player's outcomes. However, they pose problems if more quantitative conclusions have to be drawn, particularly if electricity prices have to be predicted at a high level of precision.